Good morning. Thank you for joining us at Havelock Wesleyan. We're glad that you have stopped by. Happy Father's Day to all you dads uh, that are watching, and I uh, hope you've had the maybe you've had the opportunity already to uh, be honored and celebrated and all of that. Maybe you wait till later. Uh, maybe you have to uh, call your dad later on. So if you haven't done that. Uh, this is a reminder. I saw a cute card on Facebook this week of somebody here in the community that had sent their father a Father's Day card and on the card it had the person's name and then underneath in the envelope it had aka dad and I thought that was uh, that was kind of cute. So we honor our dads today and so I hope you have an opportunity to do that. For those of you that maybe your father is no longer with us, you have an opportunity maybe to pay uh, tribute uh, to him and just thank God uh, maybe for the opportunity that you had uh, to have the father that uh, you did. And so for my dad, I get the opportunity to wish him Happy Father's Day here. I'll call you later, Dad. I know you watch um, online every Sunday morning, and so, uh, but I'll, I'll call you later. This isn't it. I will remember uh, to do that. I want to read a passage of scripture uh, today from Psalm chapter 27. Psalm chapter 27, the last few weeks, we've done these uh, calls to worship, and I want to uh, continue to do that. And the Psalm 27 says this, The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Father God, thank you for the privilege it is to be able to be gathered uh, today. And uh, Father, I just uh, pray that, that those uh, words of David, that we would echo them too, that we would know that uh, you are the God of our salvation. Father, we have nothing to fear when we are serving you and honoring you with our hearts and lives. And so God, I just pray and I ask that you would surround each person that is watching today, Father, that you would speak to them in a way in which, uh, Father, that they need most. That, God, that we would have receptive hearts uh, to hear what you need us to hear, Father, and then to go do what you've called us to do. Father in heaven, we ask all of these things in your name. Amen. Just before our worship team uh, leads us in some music this morning, I just want to give us two announcements uh, and they are these. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday is our annual Canada Day gathering where we gather with other churches from our community and we're going to be doing that virtually. Hopefully next year we can get back together to being in person with all of the different folks from different churches in our community. Uh, but uh, for this week, uh, we're, not, we're uh, going to be, it's uh, going to be available right here on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, you'll be able to uh, connect in with all of the, the different folks from the different churches that will be joining us online. So that's next Sunday uh, for our Canada Day gathering. And then a week after that, July 4th, uh, I know that's a big day for those of you that join us from the U.S. That's your, your celebration of Independence Day, but it's an even bigger day for us here in uh, this part of the world and we get to be back in person here so if you're in the area if you're driving um, if you're in the driving uh, range area of being able to join us uh, we'd love for you to be able to do that so 11 o'clock sunday morning july 4th uh, we will be uh, online as well so for those of you that um, are joining us online and because of distance or for whatever the reason may be uh, you can still continue to do that but we're back here there'll be more uh, information about all of that coming up in the next couple of weeks on uh, Facebook or wherever you get your your information from so we're excited about that excited about what God has in store for us here in this next season God bless you thanks for joining us and uh, I hope that you interact and sing and comment uh, as we uh, as we sing these songs to the Lord today God bless you Good morning, everyone. We're going to start out with Hosanna, Praise His Rising. <laughs>
Enjoy your Father's Day, everybody. you have your Bibles with you or your phones, tablets, whatever you use to uh, read the Bible, I would encourage you to, we're going to be in a couple of different, three different passages actually, but the first one is uh, Psalm 100 verse 4, Psalm 100 uh, verse 4, and just one verse that I want to read uh, in a, just a moment, but I'll, I'll get to that, but you can go ahead and, and look there. One of the things that uh, I do a lot of this time of year, for those of you that are watching this in real time, or you're watching it close to real time, this is a very important time of year in the, hist in the, in the calendar year, and it's, it's hockey playoff time. And so I, uh, I spend a lot of time watching hockey during the playoffs, during the regular season too, but there's something extra special about the playoffs because there's so much on the line. Of course, my team got eliminated in the first round. For those of you that don't know, I'm an Oilers fan. I hang my, my head in shame right now because they didn't do very well. Uh, in the first round. So I've kind of gravitated to, and I know this is going to get some of you, you'll tune right out after I say this, but please don't. There's a point to why I'm trying to say this, is I've, I've gravitated to cheer for the Habs this round of the playoffs, and they've been surprising everybody. And I know there's you're, there's criticism. I, I've been watching the games. I know what's going on and happening with the other two series that took place. But as, I, as I've been watching that, I've been listening to some of the commentaries, those, uh, those for, those against, and, and sports, especially in Canada, hockey brings out all kinds of emotion in, in those things. And I was watching one of the, the French channels, actually, when, when the Habs won and uh, beat Winnipeg a few nights ago, and the, the announcer just went absolutely ballistic, and he's yelling and screaming, uh, just so happy and elated, and he was filled, and he used one of these words, he said, we're just so grateful, uh, of course he was saying that in French, he's just so grateful that uh, the Canadians are doing way better than anybody expected, and uh, of course they've had some players that have stepped up to the plate uh, in all of that, and so I want to talk to us this morning about that word grateful, and what are you grateful for, and so perhaps for you that you're not a sports fan, and you're not a hockey fan, so you find it hard to be grateful uh, for uh, maybe your team, or maybe you're very ungrateful for your team right now. If you're like me and, and cheering for a losing team, it seems these last few years with the Oilers. But sometimes there's something within our emotions that, that can bring that out of us when we're incredibly grateful. And I love listening to different sports that I don't even follow sometimes. I was watching a little bit of soccer, and I'm not a big soccer fan to watch. And uh, the, but the announcers just so, they get so into it uh, and in gratitude to their team. And so the first thing that I want us to see this morning as we dive into our scripture is this, and if you're taking notes, is that gratitude is the door to God's presence. Gratitude is the door to God's presence. And sometimes we're trying to figure out how do we get into God's presence? How do we experience what he has for us? And I've discovered, I'm a slow learner, I told somebody uh, that just uh, a couple of days ago in, in a meeting that I had, something that I had figured out, and I said, I know you guys have figured this out way before I did, uh, but I said, I just figured out this, and this works really well. One of the things I've discovered is that when we're grateful, when we have gratitude, there's something that happens in the presence of God. And when we're grateful, it changes our perspective. And just like when we're cheering for our sports team, or maybe you're cheering for something else, but it hasn't gone right, but you're grateful uh, for, for something or for someone, there's something that brings us into the presence of God. And the Bible actually talks about that. In a, a Psalm chapter 100, verse four, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and uh, be thankful to him and bless his name. These are the words, of course, of David, but these, this is what God is calling us to do, that when we come into his presence, that we do so with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That God wants us to have an attitude of gratitude. 
It doesn't mean that we love everything about our life. It doesn't mean that there aren't things that we wish we could change. It, it doesn't mean that there aren't things that, that God is working on in our hearts and life, but that we are incredibly grateful for what God is doing, what he has done, and what we believe that he, he will do. You know, I, I, I was thinking about, you know, how, how can I illustrate this? And I think the very best way that I, that I came up with, and I hope this kind of works, is the difference in the conversation that we have uh, inside versus outside the house. And, and, and sometimes uh, when we have those, those family room chats, as I sometimes call them, and it's, there's just our family around inside the house, our attitudes and the things that we say uh, are a little bit different than what we are outside the house. And, and, and sometimes uh, we need a little more of what, uh, what God does in our heart if we're going to open the door into his presence and, and walk into the house that we need to be filled with gratitude. And, and sometimes we're not all that grateful, are we? We're, we're maybe grateful on the exterior, on the outside conversations when, when people are watching and, and paying attention and, and we think, well, we got to say the right things and do the right things. But on our inside conversations, when it's, when it's just God and, and just Him, how grateful are we? How grateful are we when we're pouring out our heart to God? When it's, when it's just Him in that place and we're having that inside the house conversation with Him. We're not trying to put on any airs or we're not trying to be somebody that we're not, but we're having those inside conversations. And so I think it's important that we always start our day and always start our prayers with thanksgiving. We say, thank you, God. We can all find something to be grateful for, regardless of what we might be going through and regardless of what we might be experiencing. Number two this morning is this gratitude brings freedom. Gratitude brings freedom. One of the things that, that I've had the privilege, and I, I don't say that lightly or honor, whatever word that you want to use, is um, throughout this school year is I've been able to go and, and hang out with kids and, and supervise them in the recess hour. And I've had different people say, how do you, how do you make time to do that? Uh, why do you do that? And I, I've thought, you know what, those two hours that I've been at the school every single day over the course of the year have been some of the best two hours of, of my week many times because kids just have a way sometimes of being incredibly grateful. Now, if, you're, if your kids are a little older, there's something that happens, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old that that doesn't necessarily translate, but I'm talking younger kids, that they just have an outlook on life that is, is, is really neat. It doesn't mean that they don't have tough stuff going on because they do, but I've discovered they're incredibly grateful and there's a freedom that comes with being grateful. It's not that it's perfect, but they're grateful for whatever small thing. And sometimes it's the smallest thing that you can do. Uh, I've had, you know, whether it's putting a Band-Aid on a, on a finger or whether it's, it's, uh, it's zippering up a coat. or uh, The big one this winter, I've discovered that, that if somebody made a zipper that worked really, really well all the time, they would make a fortune because zippers get stuck and, and they don't lock in right and all that kind of stuff and and you do something so small and, and a child is just so grateful and will say thank you over and over again for that gratitude brings freedom there's a story in the in the old testament about jonah in jonah chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 and i want to read part of the story uh, of, of these are jonah's words he says this but i will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Now, if you've never read that story before, if you're joining us and you've never read the Bible before, you've never been around church before, you might be thinking, what kind of story was going on here that, that somebody was, like, is this a fairy tale? No, this is a real life story. And just to give you a little bit of the backstory is, is Jonah was, was, was supposed to go and tell people about God so that they could turn from their ways and could walk with him. And instead of doing so, he said, God, I want those people to, to burn. Literally, I want them to burn in hell. They don't deserve your love. They don't deserve your grace. And so he went in a different direction. So he gets on a boat. And instead of going one way, he goes the other way. And a storm comes up. And, he's, and he realizes in the midst of this storm 
that the boat is going to go down, they're going to be shipwrecked, and he knows full well that this is on him. And so he goes to the, the crew and he says, look, if you throw me overboard, I know that God will stop this storm. I'm the reason for this storm. I'm supposed to be going the other way and I'm going this way. And so reluctantly, they throw him into the water. Well, God in his redeeming way that he works sends this huge fish and the fish swallows him up and he's in the belly of a fish. And it's a true story. Uh, absolutely true. And it's neat how God looked after him. We're told that he had seaweed wrapped around his head. And scientists actually tell us that that seaweed would have protected his, his face and his skin from the acids within the, the, the fish. And while he's in there, I, I, I've been in a lot of bad places before when my circumstances didn't look that great. But I have yet to be in the stomach of a fish. I just haven't been there yet. I hope I never am. And even in the midst, when he realizes how important gratitude is, he says, but I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed to you. Salvation is the Lord's. And so then God speaks to the fish. And I love this in verse 10. God speaks to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Because he was grateful in the midst of his circumstance, God honored that and provided freedom for him. God provides freedom for us when we are grateful for what he's done. The greatest gift that he could ever give to us is the gift of eternal life. And so regardless of our situation, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of how bad your day is right now, regardless of how bad my day is right now, regardless of how many emails I might have sitting on my, on my laptop or my computer or my phone that I've got to deal with, regardless of what people might be saying about you, regardless of what, my, of what people might say to you, we can be grateful that God gave his son, Jesus Christ so that we could experience the freedom of salvation. Number three, and so not only is gratitude a door into God's presence, not only does it bring freedom, but gratitude is a daily choice. Every single day, I was talking with a group of leaders last week, and we were talking about some, some good habits to, to, uh, to have in place so our minds are prepared and ready for whatever it is that we need to handle in the run of the day. And so, so one of the things I told them, I said, I, I, a long time ago, no, not too long ago, but a few years ago, I gave up checking my email at night. I just decided that after I, I'm done with work for the day, whatever time that might be, and I, that changes in my world a little bit from time to time, but once I'm done, I'm done and I don't check my email. I used to say, I'm gonna check it just before I close my eyes at night so I know what I'm prepared, and so I can be prepared for what's ahead. And what I discovered is it didn't do me a bit of good. And I would just think about some stuff at night, wouldn't be able to sleep sometimes or not rest well. And there wasn't a thing I could do about it. So I stopped doing that. And I made a choice that in the morning, and one of my morning routines is this is not coffee, this is water because if I drink coffee, it affects my voice. But I make a choice every single morning that I'm going to drink coffee. And I know some of you are going to judge me and say, well, you're, maybe you're addicted to coffee. Or maybe it, it, it is what it is. And maybe I am. But, but I love my cup of coffee in the morning. And I make a decision. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. And I've made a decision. I'm not going to check my email. And this is a small thing I know. But I'm not going to check my email until I've drank a cup of coffee. That took me a choice. I make some other choices every single day. Uh, I make a choice that I'm, I'm going to read. Uh, first thing in the morning, I'm going to read some of God's Word. I'm going to spend some time with, with Him. But those are choices we have to make every single day. But we also have to make a choice to be grateful and to have gratitude. Because left on our own, we will not be grateful. Paul and Silas, There's a. There's, I told this story actually a couple of weeks ago, if, if memory serves me right about Paul and Silas being in prison. And uh, anyways, I want to read. Uh, as we think about Paul and Silas, whatever, whatever version of prison that you have, it was probably way worse than that. 
Now, unless you've been in some third world countries before and you've seen some of the jails and the prisons there, you might have an idea or an understanding of, of what this jail looked like. But they would have been, they would have had shackles around their feet. They, would, they wouldn't have been able to move. Uh, and they're in there for doing good. You talk about their rights and freedoms and stuff being trampled on. Their rights and freedoms were being trampled on. And they're in jail for doing what God had called them to do. And in Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 26, we read these words. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now what's interesting here, I just want to stop here for a moment. That when we read these words, they were praying and singing hymns. That's code for... There was a little bit of joy in their hearts. I mean, most of us would pray in this circumstance. That doesn't surprise us. God, get us out of this mess that we're in. But to be singing hymns, whatever their favorite hymn was, they would have had it memorized. They're, they're singing. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosened. As a result of Paul and Silas' decision to be grateful and to exercise that gratefulness, God began to move in their lives and in the lives of others. It, it wasn't just their chains that were loosened. Everyone's uh, chains were loosened. You can never fully control your circumstances. If 2020 and 2021 have taught us anything, it has taught us that, that we are not in control of our circumstances. But you can always control your attitude. You can't always control your circumstances, but you can always control your attitude. And an attitude of gratitude will affect not only those around you, not only you, sorry, but all of those around you. Have you ever been in a room before where that one person that is always so negative about everything walks in and it just seems to bring down the temperature of the room. It just, everybody is, is feels a little worse about the situation than, than, than themselves sometimes. But then the opposite, have you ever been in a room before where somebody walks in that has just an incredible attitude of gratitude and how that just changes the atmosphere of that room? Or maybe even that situation or that circumstance, it, it may not change the, the, the circumstance. But it changes how we feel about the circumstance sometimes. Number four, I'm just about done. Number four, choosing gratitude means letting go of something else. Choosing gratitude means letting go of something else. Here's something, it sh I should have had it up here on the screen in front of you. But I don't, if you are writing stuff down, you can write this down, you can take it to the bank. It's true for all times and at all places. Gratitude and grudges cannot coexist. Gratitude and grudges cannot coexist. And we live in a world and we live in a culture where it says it's okay to hold grudges against someone or some person that has done something to you that wasn't right. And I just want to speak into that for just a couple of moments. I don't necessarily understand your hurt and your pain of what somebody might have done evil and sinful towards you. That's not right. It's not God honoring. God does not love it. Uh, in all the ways that it might be evil, it, is, it, it, it may very well be. But if we are allowing that grudge against that person to get in the way of the gratitude that God wants us to have in our lives, it'll stop us from being who God wants us to be. And I know this might be a hard message for you. And forgiveness might be a long way off. But by holding that grudge... We are actually putting ourselves in a prison around us. By holding a grudge, we are actually allowing that circumstance or that situation to be what drives everything about us. But when we choose to let go of that grudge, we allow that gratitude. And we don't have to be grateful for that circumstance, but we can be grateful for something that's happening in our lives.
we might feel like there's no answer to prayer. God always hears our prayers. It's just sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is yes immediately. And then many times I've discovered that the answer is, is later. And when God says no, it's, it's always because there's something better in store. And I know it's so hard to be patient, especially in our culture right now when we want everything yesterday. But can I encourage you to be patient? Can I encourage you to show gratitude despite your circumstances? I know your life isn't perfect. I know you've got struggles and pains. But if we let go of those grudges and disappointments and the complaining, I believe there's a freedom that God enables us to walk into. And that's my prayer for you. That as we, that as we finish out this uh, series today, that you would be grateful, not for your circumstances, but you would be grateful for something that God is doing or has done in your life. And so I want to challenge you in these last few moments to ask God if there's something that you can be grateful for right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe type that into the, to the chat there if you're watching live right now. What are you grateful for? What is it in the midst of so much uncertainty and so much brokenness and so much hurt and so much pain? What are you grateful for? You know, I was thinking about what am I, why, what am I grateful for in the midst of all that is happening and, and going on right now? And uh, for some of you, uh, you, know, you know my story uh, a little bit um, of what we've been journeying through with, with my own family and, and uh, with my mom and some, some, um, uh, uh, some uh, uh, sickness stuff that she's dealing with. And she's probably watching at some point too. And I, I love you, mom. I know you hate when I, when I point you out like this. But one of the things that I've been so grateful for in, in the midst of, of COVID and and all of that is, it's, it has given me an opportunity and a time to, to really focus and to call home more and to do those things. And I was a, 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 even able to get up for a, for a visit back in March. And, and I'm not sure all of that would have been able to happen if it hadn't have been for this pandemic that we're in right now. And it's really easy to look at our circumstances and say, it's terrible what's happening right now. And I believe there's something that that we can look to and say, I'm grateful. And I was grateful that I was able to get away for a week. And then I guess I had to do the self-isolation thing that even in the midst of all of that, that I was grateful that I had the time to be able to do that. So regardless of our circumstances, as tough as what they might be, there is something that we can be grateful for. What are you grateful for this morning? Let me pray with you and pray for you. Father God, thank you that you are with us, Lord, every step of the way. And God, that you uh, want to give us a life of freedom, that when we come in and, and accept you into our heart and life and we decide to follow you by faith, that, that God, one of the things that you want us to experience is that freedom that comes from following you. And Lord, it can only happen when we let go of the grudges and, and allow gratefulness to be part of our everyday experience. And so God, I pray for each person that is watching online, Father, that you would speak to hearts and lives and you would help us to find at least one thing that we could be grateful for in the midst of all that is happening and going on. God, we love you today. And we're so grateful for what you've done for us, what you did for us on the cross. And God, I pray that for all that is said and done, we'll give glory and honor to you. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. I just want to mention two things before I sign off. One, it'll be coming up on the screen here behind me in just a moment. Next Sunday, we're going to have a special Sunday. We're going to gather with other churches uh, in our region for our annual Canada Day gathering. And so you can find that online, same place as what you are right now. And I'll be gathering with other leaders uh, to be able to bring that to you. And we're just so uh, delighted that we're able to do that. So uh, at 11 o'clock, you don't have to change a thing. It'll, it'll be there ready to go. And, and secondly, as I, as I sign off here in just a moment, I just want to say that if there's something that, that, that we can pray with you for, and I know there's a lot of you that are walking through a lot of different things, we'd love to be able to do that. And so please don't hesitate to, to reach out. Lord willing, if everything goes the way that it's supposed to go, 
uh, here in our province in Nova Scotia uh, will be able to get back to in-person gathering. For those of you that are here in our region, you'll be able to, uh, to join us in gathering. Hopefully in July is what we're aiming for. Uh, but we'll continue to uh, provide the online uh, method to, especially for those of you that are, aren't in the area. God bless you. Have a great week on account of God's presence being with you. And remember, what is it that you can be grateful for, even in the midst of discouraging circumstances? God bless you. We'll see you next week.